There, I'm, I'm having trouble getting stuff to start. Wait a second. Here we go. Oops! Oops! <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Morning, afternoon, evening, sunset, sunrise, whatever your day brings. Uh, so glad that you're here. Uh, obviously, something is missing. That's Sarah. She's having trouble with, trouble with her connection to the internet today. So uh, I'm... Uh, going to try and wing this. So good morning, Joe. Sorry that you can't see your daughter this morning. Hello. Uh, Lynette's here. Uh, let's see. Uh, John Tyner. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, Janine. Hey, Janine. Janine's got a cool picture or two in the picture of the week. Uh, let's see. Sharon Haynes. Good morning from Alabama. I'm not going to say go Bama. Go Clemson. Hey, Chris. Yeah, no, I got the theme song figured out. I just not used to having to punch those buttons. Oh, uh, let's see. Joe, what's up? Willa Dean. Willa Dean's here. Tommy Buck is here. Good morning, everybody. Kathleen Miller's here. Sue Carta. Marytown Etsy is my eighth great grandmother. That is so cool. Yes, go Clemson, Joe. Thank you. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, Sarah's having internet problems. She's not connecting. Took her 40 minutes to send me a note that she wasn't going to be here. So that's pretty, pretty bad. Happy Greg. Happy Greg. Happy Greg. Pre-Halloween mags and gang. That's so fun. Uh, morning, Nancy Wilson. Hey, Nor uh, from Denmark. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I am uh, just about going crazy here. So I hope everybody has uh, a great day planned. And uh, I hope that you have great plans for the weekend, safe plans to get out and do some trick-or-treating or hand out candy. Your kids can ha get, get lots of candy. You can go to the dentist next week. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start with, let me get my share up. Let's see. Here we go. Let's see. Add to stream. There we go. Let me make it bigger. Uh, question of the week. Are there any ghosts in your tree? Hey, Leah. Nice to see you, Kirsten. If I if I miss more of you, I'm, it's kind of hard to do with just one person, but that's okay. Uh, questions of the week. Any ghost stories in your family tree? How about that? That, uh, that's pretty cool. So we had uh, 28 answers in the G2G post. There's some pretty good answers over in the Facebook groups as well. I'm going to check those out. Um, so uh, I like the first answer. Is being a member of Wikitree leads to a busy life. You'd think there wouldn't be time to chase ghost stories, but as a descendant of the Loftus family, this one has been haunting me. And it's about Loftus Hall. He has a link going off of here uh, about um, one evening, Charles was resting in his home in 1775 with his second wife and daughter from his first marriage. And while Loftus family were away on business during a storm, a ship unexpectedly arrived. So basically this guy shows up, he's gorgeous and likes him. They're hanging out, they're playing cards. The guy forgets to deal her one of the cards and she sees a card on the floor. She leans down to pick it up. She notes that the guy has cloven hooves, says it to the fella. The fellow goes straight up through the roof and out through a hole through the ceiling. So that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good ghost story to have in your family. All right, cool. Alas, there are no wonderful stories ab about casket girls, vampires, and New Orleans. There are wonderful stories. But uh, none that she can find. That's Joyce Vander Bogart that matched to her husband's family. Uh, 
Steve Harris. Steve's given us a good uh, Black Hope Cemetery was an old 19th century cemetery for African Americans, but today the location has been covered up by a housing subdivision. The events surrounding this discovery and hauntings of the land and houses have been chronicled in books, the Black Hope Horror, the true story of a haunting, and the film Grave Secrets, the legacy of Hilltop Drive, starring Patty Duke, David Selby, and Kirsten Warren. That's fun. You check that stuff out if you want to get a good laugh. Um, let's see. Uh, nothing really fantastical. Uh, this from Heather Cushion. But the home I currently live in was built by my great-grandfather, Alfred George Bell. He came to the house after hooking up the water line, sat down at the table to eat a sandwich, and then suddenly died of a brain aneurysm. Uh, the home in set 40 acres was left to his wife, Janella, who was 52 at the time. Uh, I was in preschool. In the family auction, her father purchased the home and the land, and we've lived here ever since. Dad did a number of renovations with the help of his uncles, adding a second story and a garage. Mom insisted on installing numerous large wall mirrors all over the place. And we've had our own bit of spooks, things going missing, reappearing, or randomly falling, doors opening. But most of it harmless. We chalk it up to grandpa and grandma. Uh, one night, I did have a singular sleep paralysis episode when I was younger, and I swore that the knob of my door turned. I, it, it, have any of you guys had that feeling that you couldn't move and there was something going on in your room that you should be doing something about, but you couldn't? That's a scary thought. Um, she also had some uh, misgivings about a porcelain doll that her grandmother gave her when she was younger. It always freaked her out. So first she buried it in her closet uh, until she started having closet nightmares in her room. And so she chucked the, the thing into her mom's clients. Uh, and uh, she talks about misgivings and wanderings about the house at night. I, no, yeah. Uh, ghost story about my fourth great grand uncle or great fourth, fourth times great uncle, Joseph Buck. He was a lock keeper at Winkwell near Hamill Hampstead, and as a result was allowed to live in the local lock keeper's cottage with his wife and whatever family chose to visit him. The problem with this cottage, arguably the lock in general, was that the door was very close to the Winkwell's pub, the three horseshoes. It meant that on Christmas Day when Joseph was thought to have been on his way home from a drinking when he fell in and drowned in his own lock. Uh, at the same, at the time, the news of his death circulated as a, a space filler in newspapers across England. And after his death, the legend emerged that he haunts the pub because he was mad that they caused his death. How about that? Hey, Hillary, Hillary's here in Holmquist, Patricia Jackson. Hey, y'all. Sarah's out. If you didn't notice, it's just me. And I'm in the middle of doing the uh, uh, question of the week which is, do you have any ghosts in your tree? Uh, seventh great grandfather, Hugh Jones. This is from Alexis Nelson. Alexis always gives us fun stuff. He was part of the Puritan Great Migration, and he must have come to a mysterious end since four years after he died, he was brought into the infamous Salem Witch Trials as being a ghost. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Pretty sure I've told this one before, but I'll tell it a million times. This is from our buddy, Chris Ferriello, uh, my grandmother, Olympia, passed away in 2002. We thought we heard her voice as we were selling the house she lived in up until the day she died. Well, my dad decided to put the test, uh, put it to a test and see if there was a ghost in the house. He put Hershey's candy bar on the kitchen table and left for the day. We came back and there was the wrapper all crumpled up beside uh, and beside it was a crumpled up tissue. There was no sign of break-in or anything. For real? Did you actually see that, Chris Ferriello? That's pretty cool. That's pretty fun. Let's see. Unfortunately, no real spookiness in this one, but my great-great-grandparents would have thought so. My great-grandfather, their son, Leonard, joined the Royal Navy and subsequently served in Australia and New Zealand before deciding that he didn't want to return home essentially going AWOL and setting, settling in Wellington, New Zealand about 1903. At this point, he couldn't contact them, and they all knew all they knew that he was serving somewhere in the Pacific. 
This is from Amelia Uding. Uh, while he was working as a seaman, eventually boarding a ship, came back to England. He arrived at his family home in Norwich during Mass and was waiting at their doorstep when they arrived home. His mother nearly fainted. Why, you might ask? Because shortly before this, several soldiers in the Navy had been killed in battle in Papua New Guinea, and they assumed that he was among them since they hadn't heard anything from him. Uh, they had even asked his name to be read at the Mass, so uh, that's pretty interesting showing up and having your family think you're a ghost. Um, Leanne Deere talks about uh, being uh, ill and experiencing a mystifying but fuzzy brain syndrome. syndrome. Woo! Let's see. Uh, she walked in to look at her uh, a, a picture that was uh, glowing. And um, she just thought in her mind, she's happy. She's brilliantly happy. And then her brother called the next day to let her know that her mother's only sibling, her beloved Wayne, had passed away unexpectedly that previous night. And in her brain, she's connecting the fact that she thought that that was a glowing photo of her beloved, uh, of, his, of her mom waiting for her beloved brother. Let's see. Charita Perkins, my only ghost story isn't, that exciting, but it certainly was to me as a child. I lived with my grandparents and the Jones Chapel Methodist Church was four doors down from our home. Uh, he told me before he started dating my grandmother that he was on a hayride. This is her grandfather. A team of mules or horses and bales of hay to sit on the back of the wagon. Those are very common here. Uh, uh, the men were all flirting with the girls and they were being left off at their own homes. And it was about midnight. They drove past the church and everyone saw a light on inside. He jumped off the wagon to go see who was in the church as it was all un always unlocked. Uh, he said the light was coming from behind the altar, altar. He ran up to see who or what it was. It only took him a few seconds to run. And when he arrived at the altar, there was no one there. She doesn't really explain if the light was still shining when he got to the altar. Uh, there were a few boys and girls standing at the back door to see who was going in and out. So they, nobody ever ran past them and the driver made them leave, but they never really figured out what had gone on that caused that light to glow in the church. Oh, uh, let's see. The um, Tim Wood says, my parents lived in a 17th century house on the village green on the wall at the top of the stairs. It was a painting of a young relative, Kate Bishop from my great mother's grandmother's side of the family. Kate was a poet whose poetry was published in newspapers under the pseudonym KB. I have a book and some newspaper clippings of her poems. Other than those about her family, most of them were quite dark. And unfortunately, she committed suicide when she was 23. One evening, when visiting from the U.S. with my wife and two-year-old daughter, Katie, uh, who were sometimes they referred to as KB for Katie Bundle, we heard what sounded like Katie having a nightmare. They went upstairs to make sure she was okay. She was sitting up in bed, apparently quite happy. And she pointed to the picture on the wall of KB and said, the lady in the picture came to visit me. Ooh, there we go. Oh, let's see. I have two stories, but uh, they're not long past the sentence. This is from Connie Volkman. My cousin loved butterflies. When we were filing past her casket, end of November, cold and windy, a butterfly, that's not typically the time you see butterflies, a butterfly landed on my arm and stayed there for quite a while uh, as I was scattering dirt. Many gasps were heard by those present. Uh, it was a, It's a wonderful memory. The second story she has is, my husband and I decided that whoever died first would let the other know somehow they were all right. A few years later, my husband died in my arms. That's very sweet. A week later, on a very bright, sunny morning, his very shy cat that lived under the bed and only came out for him suddenly appeared on top of the bed, meowing very loudly and jumping up and down as if trying to get something. The room then filled with the odor of a cigar. This only lasted a minute, and then it was gone, and Fiona the cat went right back under the bed. Uh, she thinks that this was the message from her husband, letting her know that he was okay. Isn't that a cool story? Uh, let's see. 
somebody says they're 10 degrees. Janine Eiselman. There you go. Janine says that she's uh, 10 degrees from John William Bell, who was haunted by the woman or the person or the thing that was the Bell Witch in Robertson County, Tennessee. She has a profile on Wikitree if you want to go check it out. Uh, pretty cool, interesting. Well, no, yeah, yeah. She's well, she has she's on the space page for ghosts on Wikitree. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's any uh, any uh, interesting conversations going on. I'm not even going to ask what's going on, Chris. So many. <laughs> I got the story on video from my mother. Happened in Mexia, Texas. After working one evening, walking home, my mom, her parents, and a sibling uh, saw a man on the roof smoking a cigarette. Nobody was home. They lived in an old funeral home. I would not live in an old funeral. No. I, would you live in an old funeral home? No. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, let's see. They lived in an old funeral home. Uh, uh, upset my grandparents when they saw this guy sitting on the roof smoking a cigarette because they thought somebody had been broken in or was trespassing. They get inside the house and there's nobody there. They go upstairs, nobody. Uh, and my grandparents can't figure out how anyone could get up on the roof anyhow. Later th that night, they heard more noises that they could not explain. Um, Chris Ferriello. Chris, you're talking about poltergeists. Uh, so let's see. Um, that's from Rhonda Smith. Uh, oh, and Rhonda is talking about... Uh, oh, no, no, no. I'm gonna... Oh, the D'Urbeville family, famous for the Thomas Hardy's novel, Tess of the D'Urbevilles was based on the medieval Durpleville family of Bear Regis Dorset. According to the legend, a ghostly coach crosses the bridge by Woolbridge Manor near Wool Dorset at night, but only those with Durpleville blood can see it. One version claims the coach contains the ghost of John Turville of Woolbridge and Anne, the daughter of Thomas Howard, the first Viscount of Biden Binden on their elopement. And Mike Jonas wants to test that out. He wants to go over and see if he can see the ghosts. Let's see. Some members, this is for Marion Saruti. Marion always has some good, get good answers to some of the posts, and she always does some good posts. She had a dream after moving into a new apartment. All the furniture was rearranged so that the sofa was blocking the entrance from the living room to the bedroom. I went into the bedroom from the living room. However, instead of moving the sofa or climbing over it, I simply walked through it. After all, you dream in your astral body and physical objects pose no obstacles to travel in the state of consciousness. The second story she has is not really a ghost story, but it's more scary than some actual encounters with the departed. When I was at Girl Scout camp, we used to tell ghost stories sitting around the campfire. Sometimes two or more scouts or leaders would collaborate. One would tell the stories and the other would hide in the woods making scary noises. We, we've all kind of had those. Um, then we would all sing songs. Now, I can see that singing was supposed to get us into a better mood after being scared out of our wits. That's, I, I, that happened to me. All right, so this is from Claire Nava. I don't know, Nava. Jesse's ghost, accident or suicide. Jesse, good one, 4079, was a socialite, the wife of a wealthy doctor who suffered from depression. Her physician prescribes some form of laudanum, uh, which was perfectly normal for the 1930s. It is illegal now. Uh, she would take a small dose in the afternoon and sleep until after dinner, waking calm and refreshed. On the last day of February 1934, Jesse's daughter, Doris, was downstairs in their beautiful two-story home at 5810 Carlton Way, Los Angeles. I don't know why people want to describe it. This is a ghost story, and it was happening in a beautiful home. Uh, and here's the address for it. Uh, the maid came in and told Doris that Mrs. Goodwin wasn't up yet. Doris told the maid to let her mother sleep. She must need to sleep, right? Uh, this act of kindness was directly responsible for Jesse's death. Jesse had taken her usual dose, but at some time in the afternoon, she woke up and took more. When no one woke her, Jesse's sleep turned into a coma that deepened into death. Family members saw her ghost from time to time. The children grew up and moved away. Her husband remarried, and the big, beautiful home was sold to someone who ran it as a boarding house. Stories began to circulate among the boarders about the woman in blue who paced the second floor. 
It's been torn down. I wonder if anybody sees Jesse's ghost in the newer buildings. All right. Uh, my father told me a story about visiting Mount Calvary Mission Baptist Church Cemetery in Little River, South Carolina. He went with a friend to visit a cemetery at night when he was younger. My father swore he saw ghosts in the cemetery and he was afraid of sinking into the ground. In Wilmington, uh, a pair, uh, North Carolina, apparently there are reports that the Bellamy Mansion was haunted. There's a link here on this post to the Bellamy haunted Bellamy Mansion if you want to check it out. Uh, let's see. Ah, my mother told me, this is from Roger Horn, told the story of a door that would not stay closed when she was young. Her house caught fire and burned beyond repair. So her father salvaged the front door and installed it on the new house he built on the same site. When it got quiet in the house, latched or not, the door would open, splintering the door jam. He set a board between the door jam and, and a block of wood he'd nailed to the floor and scooted the table against it, determined to keep it closed for at least one night. When the house became quiet, the door opened, splintering the piece of lumber he'd set against the block, shoving the table across the room. He took the door out and burned it. The new door never caused a problem. I wouldn't like that door either. No, no, I would not. Let's see. The Blankenship surname thought to be a variant, variant of Blinkensop, Blinkensop Castle in Northumberland, England, of course, wouldn't be complete without its own ghost, and thus the story of the White Lady of Blankenship. There's a great link there if you want to go read that. Let's see. Several houses I've lived in, this is from Sarah Jenkins, uh, have seen, have had ghosts. It doesn't bother me as I grew up in a house with one. There was a photo taken of my great grandparents and my grandmother holding me as a baby. They were standing at the back door of the house and there's a ghostly figure standing behind them. You know how I'm always looking for people standing behind these pictures and these photos we look at every week. Uh, I had the photo for a number of years and it was lost when my belongings were stolen. Now, I want to see this photo. So whoever stole it, you got to come forward and show it to us. Uh, she, Her grandmother told me that she knew the ghost was responsible when, as a toddler, I did the haka, the Maori war chant. Now, I don't know about you. If a toddler came at me doing a Maori chant going, you know, and all that, I would just be, I would be, I would go, gone, gone, left, leave. Uh, so she, she's doing this Maori war chant as a toddler with, with, from the back of her throat, like a warrior before I had ever even heard of one. I can't imagine a toddler would, and it made the hairs on the back of her neck stand up. Well, yeah, yeah. I, my hair would, I'd be out of, you'd be, the toddler would have been left. Uh, let's see. The ghost stayed mostly in the formal lounge, which I had to walk through every night when I went to bed. The lounge was always cold and I always felt the presence when I went through there. Ah, let's see. My family ghost uh, was my two times great uncle Jasper Newton Smith called Jack. Jack was born in 1833 and passed away in 1918 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was a Confederate soldier, farmer, successful Atlanta businessman, and the proprietor of the Bachelor's Domain Hotel in Atlanta. Sounds like a party house. But foremost, he was a manufacturer of bricks used in post-Civil War Atlanta. Uh, it has been stated that Jack supplied well over 10 million bricks to help with the reconstruction of Atlanta after it burned to the ground. Uh, during his lifetime, Great Uncle Jack has his mausoleum built, which was topped with a life-sized figure of himself sitting in his favorite armchair, holding his famous top hat, in his lap, his mausoleum can be found very near the main entrance of the Oakland Cemetery in Atlanta, Georgia. If you're in the area, go by, check it out. But Jack can still be seen sitting in his mausoleum, above his mausoleum, in his armchair to this very day. However, it's been stated that on a many a night, Jack has been seen to rise up out of his comfortable resting place to stand and watch over the cemetery. Some uh, cemetery visitors have stated that they've seen Jack strolling around the cemetery as well. You can Google Jasper Newton Smith and find lots of photos about Jack and his mausoleum. Uh, I'm part of a family tree answer is yes. And this, um, Pat Miller is very excited that uh, Aon asked this question. It encouraged her to set up a free space profile for memories uh, 
I'm a ghost myself. That's space memories. The short piece I've written is the memory. Uh, when I got my first computer nearly 20 years ago, I was playing around with a paint feature and produce this illustration. Uh, I put up a, a post. Pat was also the, the photo of, of the week last week that's uh, on the front page at Wikitree. So there's a good story here if you want to go check it out and check out the picture of Pat. That's a, kind of a fun thing there. Oh, let's go. Uh, Chris Ferriolo is just chatting away in the chat. He says that there's uh, several haunted cemeteries in Haverhill, Mass. Good morning, June. June Butka. Did you know that you and Aon Langoff share a ghost? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. My grandma shared a couple of different ghost stories, but the one I remember is that she said one night when she was quite young, she thought she saw a young girl at the top of the stairs, but then she disappeared. Years later, she told her father the story, and his response was that there was one night when she was young when he thought he saw a young girl coming down the stairs that just disappeared when she reached the bottom. They never told each other about it because they were afraid they were going to scare each other. So that's pretty good. Haverhill. Okay, I got it now. Yes, it's Philip Babb. I think there is a space page for Philip Babb. June Butka. That's the ghost that she and Eowyn share. Uh, let's see. Susanna. Let's see. Jeff. Here we go. Jeff Crew. Uh, my grandma shared a couple of different ghost stories, but the one I remember is that she said one night when she was quite young, she thought she saw a young girl. At the oh, that's I'm reading the same one over again. Sarah's not here to keep me straight. My sister Patricia, this is from Susanna Yakel, told me that twice she saw a ghost of our deceased brother Michael. Once she walked downstairs and saw him in her husband's office at the computer. I did not know that ghosts played on the computer. And another time she saw him at my mom's place while her daughters and I were playing computer games. So her brother Michael wants to get on the computer. Uh, my brother, now deceased, said that he heard a person ghost walking around upstairs in the home of relatives he was visiting in Pennsylvania. He was alone in the house because the rest of the family was sightseeing. That's another one from Susanna. And then the last one is not a ghost story per se, but when my brother was on his deathbed, my sister's family visited to say goodbye. The night he died, her, her young daughter, a kindergartner, entered my brother's room to find her father. She saw another person there with no feet standing or floating, really, motioning for her to be quiet and not to say anything. Like, yeah, crazy. That's that's crazy. Let's see. The Facebook posts were pretty fun, too. <clears throat> and we don't need to see Eowyn popping up right now. Oh, let's see. Jennifer, Lynn, Lynn Jennifer said, yes, my great grandmother's brother was walking home through the woods in northern Maine one snowy, bright, moonlit night, of course. It was early 1900s. He met the priest coming the opposite way along the path. They greeted each other and continued along in opposite directions. The next morning, he found out the priest was killed in a train accident the evening before, and it had already occurred at the time he would have seen him on the path in the woods. Yeah, yeah, that would scare me to death. Oh, uh, let's see. And Rebecca Go just says lots. <laughs> Jake Ferris. For many years, I got to summer in the old family farmhouse, which is now a museum. It is very strange to be in the house with all its furnishings and whatnot, but no family. Ah, but there is still family. There is at least a couple of ghosts from each generation hanging out there. Uh, my grandfather spent the night in an old abandoned house. This is from Joyce Collins. He woke up several times during the night feeling cold with blankets folded up at the foot of the bed. Don't mess with my bed at night while I'm sleeping, please. No, no. Uh, ghost was a surname in my family tree, Alan Comfort. That is a fun thing, too, is to look up the ghost surname. Let's get rid of Aon again. Here we go. Lloyd DeFizer. Uh, wait, Lloyd. I'm not even... Does anybody know how to pronounce his name? Feel it, feel it, sir. Devere Hunt. Okay, the house where my great, great fifth great grandfather, Doctor Henry Hunt, the state apothecary and first governor of Apothecaries Hall, grew up. Unfortunately, we visit, visited during the day and didn't see her. So there's a, a great link on that Facebook for the hauntings and heritage of Kurag Chase. 
Uh, Robert Keniston says, in a previous residence, we had a sliding door with vertical blinds. At odd times, with the door closed and neither the heat or AC running, several of the vanes would start swinging. My wife and I always believed it was her mother stopping by for a visit just to let us know she was around and keeping an eye on us. That's very nice. <clears throat> um, no real ghost, but my great grandfather did shock his parents arriving home. That's we saw that post already from Amelia Uding. Um, I'm from the Caribbean. There are so many. The house I grew up in uh, was thought to be haunted. June Stearns Butka. Here we go. My great-grandfather, Philip Babb, whom she shares with Eowyn Langoff, was reported to haunt Appledore Island of the Isles of Shoals. See the Isles of Shoal lore and the legend of pirates and ghosts. Yeah, like you're walking out on the beach and all of a sudden a specter comes rushing up to you wearing, I believe, a butcher's um, leather um, apron and a knife. That's not a ghost I want to run into on a on a beach in New England. Let's see. Jesse James uh, thought he lived after his death, but um, there's another interesting uh, link there. Irma Box Eek says that my mom promised to haunt my father and a friend of the family, both who she believed mistreated her brother and myself. And since I'm not in contact with him in, anymore, I'm not sure she succeeded. That's a funny post. Janine Lee Eiselman Goodson. Uh, I do not have any that I know of in my direct line, but I am 10 degrees again from William Bell. Uh, Renee Lukinar. Uh, after Opa passed, Oma was annoyed that every time she came from the living room, Opa was just stepping out the front door. That would scare me to death. I have a connection to a really great ghost story that was featured in uh, the haunting, the celebrity haunting show, the haunting of uh, Tom Green. Uh, my spouse's great grandfather died in a humongous fire in 1913 at Parliament Hill here in Canada. Uh, he and his namesake, or he was named after uh, Alphonse Desjardins, they were both working at Parliament. Uh, the great grandfather was a, a brown coat or a Dominion policeman, the forerunner of the mounted police. Uh, and during the fire, he was pretty heroic. He is um, given credit for saving many people who could not get out of the burning building by themselves. So he helped them get out. Um, they eventually found his body under the West Tower entrance of our Parliament Hill building at that time. Uh, so he did pass away, as did his uh, uncle, Alphonse Desjardins. Well, Tom Green, if you know anything about Tom Green, he's pretty famous for doing practical jokes. And um, so one night he somehow talked his way into the Natural History Museum of Canada here in Ottawa and uh, was supposed to be doing something there, writing something. And he was spending the night in the museum. I don't know how he talked his way in there. Well, he was not on the floor he was supposed to be in. He went up to another floor um, and was trying to keep away from the security guards because he wanted to do things that he wasn't supposed to do. That's what Tom Green does. While he was up there, um, he turned around and looked, and there was a man walking towards him who was quite tall, who was wearing a particular, you know, clothing. And... Um, uh, apparently, according to the Long Island medium, um, this ghost was Alphonse Desjardins, our great grandfather. So he is featured on this show about uh, Tom Green. And I have a, a little link there. You can go and watch the blurb, which is fascinating. Uh, let's see. Christine Camille Miller. I have my own ghost story. I worked for Lane Bryant in Madison, Wisconsin at the West Town Mall back in the 90s. Whenever I entered the back room, there was an overpowering smell of orange blossoms. Everyone could smell it if I was in the room, but if they came by and by themselves, they never smelled it. There would be items shifted in the room as well uh, that that were mine, but never anyone else's. I always felt that instead of ghost making its presence known, it was a guardian angel made me feel less anxious. Isn't that a cool way of thinking of that? <clears throat> Let's see. This inn in Durham, New Hampshire, this is from Nora Hernandez, uh, is rumored to be haunted by a descendant of my ancestor, Valentine Hill, 
who once owned the property. The story goes that his daughter, Hannah Boyce, drowned in the adjacent river, although there's no documentation of this event. Uh, she did predecease her husband, and his will specifies that he is to be buried as near to her as possible and supposedly enjoys messing with electronic devices. There have also been re reports of a male spirit, so you can go check that out. Um, and man, Spencer just says he thinks that, that they're fun. So that is the question of the week, which took up a lot of time. Uh, hey, good morning, Az, uh, from Paulette Peasley. So hello, Paulette. So hi. So that was the question of the week. Uh, we're going to jump on. Let's see if I can do. Um, let's see. No. Okay. Are you guys connected to any of these people? Get your uh, get your stuff out. Joanne, Joe's stating that if I'm feeling blue, I smell lavender, which is uh, my mom always wore. So I'm sure it's my mom telling me all is good. That's so sweet. That's cool. And June was suggesting that we put up a page for H.H. H. Holmes, the first known serial killer in the U.S. And M. Holmquist says, now I can't stop wondering about the ghosts of serial killers. Do they have unfinished business? That is not something I want to think about. No, I do not want to think about that. Thank you. So the very first one is Mary Etsy. Let's go over to hers. Are you related to Mary Etsy? Uh, let's see. I don't know anything about her. We're going to learn together. She was born in 1634 in Great Yarmouth, Norfolk. The, quest, the, the people of the week are which accused witch are you most closely related to? So all these people are witches. So Mary Esty, um, Gallows Hill, Salem, Massachusetts. And they've just recently discovered where that is. They've done uh, archaeological work and found where the uh, where that hill is. Um, so she was accused of witchcraft. Um, <clears throat> see, 58 years old, married to Isaac Etsy, uh, with whom she had had seven children, owned and lived upon a large valuable farm. Her examination followed the pattern of most in Salem, the girls had fits and were speechless at times, and the magistrate expostulated with her for not confessing her guilt, which he deemed proven beyond a doubt that the sufferings of the afflicted. Goodness gracious, I would not have wanted to live at that time. Sarah Cole, is anybody related to Sarah Cole? Sue Carta says that um, Mary is her eighth great grandmother. That's crazy. That's crazy cool. So Sarah Cole, did I open that one up already? Nope. Let's get that one open. Mary Cole, 1661. She, uh, let's see, is there, she claimed that Sarah's specter appeared to her night and day, tormenting her and causing her pain. Sarah was imprisoned, but was not indicted or tried for months. Uh, then in 1693, she was indicted. Uh, after several people, including Mary Eaton, Elizabeth Wellman, John Brown, Abraham William, and Isaac Wellman testified against her. That's just craziness. Let's see. Margaret Matson. Margaret Matson. She uh, accused in the only witchcraft trial ever held in Pennsylvania. I didn't know they did them in Pennsylvania. She was tried in February 1684 and found guilty of having the common fame of a witch, but was acquitted of actually being one. Her co-accused was Gertrude, wife of Hendrik Jacobson, recorded in the minutes of the trial as Yishro Hendrickson. Were tried for witchcraft in Pennsylvania by the Quakers. That's interesting. I thought the Quakers were people who didn't believe in bad things like stuff people are posting some of the the degrees so janine is uh 13 from mary parsons craig is 16 degrees from a number of them of course you are greg because you got that magical ability to create these incredible applications of course you're related to a bunch of them oh let's see and June says she's got ancestors as witches, accusers, jury, and judge from the trials. Oh, that's crazy. 
Oh, let's go on. Grace Sherwood. Anybody related to Grace? Um, she was in the Virginia colony. Let's see. Grace, uh, last person known to have been convicted of witchcraft in Virginia. Wow. Sherwood, a midwife who at times wore men's clothes, lived in what today is the rural Pungo neighborhood, and she later became known as the Witch of Pungo because she wore pants. No, I'm not. I'm just saying that. But no, she her neighbors thought she was a witch who ruined crops, killed livestock and conjured storms. She went to court a dozen times either to fight witchcraft charges or to sue her accusers for slander. Can you imagine? Oh, my gosh. Ann Foster, that's uh, Chris's. Chris, we knew you had a a witch in your family. That's crazy. That one's... See, Captain John Alden, Plymouth Colony. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it, I can see what the um, witchcraft stuff... I am scanning. Let's see. Here we go. Captain Alden was summoned by the magistrates of Salem on the 28th of May, 1692, to answer an accusation of witchcraft. He was confronted by a lot of winches whom he had never seen before and accused of bewitching them. Scary times indeed, folks. Bridget Bishop. All right. Uh, she lived in Salem Town, Massachusetts. And she was the first victim to be hanged during the Salem Witch Trials of 1692. And, and interesting, there's more information about the trials. Over 400 accused, about 72 accused and tried, 20 executed, and over 100 died awaiting trial or release. Wow, that's craziness. Let's go on. Mary Bradbury She's also up in Salem. Let's see, marriage and children, accused of witchcraft. Uh, in 1692, she was defended by Major Robert Pike. Accounts of her case tell the high esteem in which she was held. Uh, we have been married 55 years, and she's been a loving and faithful wife unto me to this day. She has been wonderful, laborious, diligent, industrious in her place and employment about the bringing up of our family, which have been 11 children. That's crazy. <clears throat> All right. Are you going to talk about the WikiTree feature Friday livecast next week? I, I hadn't even thought about it, Greg. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll see. See if we have time left. Oh, Mary Parsons. Everybody seems to think that Mary Parsons is the biggest, uh, biggest uh, thing. Greg, is the livecast next week about all of the cool apps? Am I am I correct in, in assuming that that it's about the, the applications? If so, I can mention it. I, I probably wouldn't mention any of yours though. Uh, so Mary Parsons, let's see, 1626, Gloucester, England. Let's see if I she was accused of witchcraft by some of her neighbors who were supposedly envious of her wealth and wanted to disgrace her. A neighbor, Sarah brought Bridgman claimed the death of her baby boy was a result of Mary's witchcraft. Rumors began to swirl about town. Joseph Parsons decided to go on the offensive. He charged James Brigman with slander and spreading rumors about Mary Parsons' alleged witchcraft. Wow. <clears throat> That's crazy. Samuel Wardwell. Oh, let's see. Massachusetts Bay Colony. Let's see. Convicted of witchcraft, he died by hanging at Proctor's Ledge, Gallows Hill, Salem. Uh, that is crazy. The settlers were greatly alarmed by Andover Indian attack, 1676, which saw neighbors killed, wounded, and captured in several houses burned. These early Puritans were also known to be fear fearful of God's punishment and believed Satan and witches to be the real real and omnipresent. It's an interesting write-up there. The last one is Deliverance Dane. I don't think that Deliverance Dane sounds like somebody who would be bad. 
Let's see. Let's go down. Salem Witch Trials. Deliverance was one of several members of the family of her father-in-law, Reverend Francis Dane, who were involved in the Salem Witch Trials. Deliverance was arrested and questioned. She confessed and implicated Francis, though he was never arrested or tried. Unfortunately, the records of arrest and examinations have been lost, but an account of her confession was printed in 1867. Scary, scary times going on. Scary times. Let's move on. Let's see if I can find the photos of the week. Uh, the very first photo, and Sarah would have been excited to see this. If, if Sarah, if you're watching, the very first photo of the week is Alexis Nelson and a kitty. That is of her father-in-law, Leroy Nelson. And she says that the whole family loves cats. Our theme of the week is autumn, and you can see he's standing in a pile of leaves. So that's nice. Cute little picture. What a pumpkin. It looks like a nose to me. Looks like a nose coming out. So my father, this is Joyce Vander Bogart, uh, complete, competed in growing the biggest pumpkin. His didn't win, but he sure did have fun showing it off. That's crazy. Yeah, we have those two big pumpkins. This is from Janine and shows three of her father's siblings, Mary, John, and Harold. Janine, why didn't you put the name or why didn't they write the name of this beautiful collie? There's another puppy for Sarah to see. There's a beautiful picture. Love those, the, the outfits. Nice. <clears throat> and Pat Miller, who was last week's photo of the week, um, starred one. Uh, this is a picture of John and Evelyn, her parents, during 1942, sitting on some rocks somewhere. Funny. This picture makes me laugh. Autumn always signified the beginning of the school year in the United States. And this picture shows my sister and me on the first day of school, 1959. They look very happy. And that is Robin Shawls. That's a cute picture. Let's go on down. Now, I don't understand exactly how all this relates to Autumn, other than there are leaves on the ground. Uh, when I was at full capacity in the manufacturing plant, some of my business associates would have their lobbed drop off a machine at my residence and request custom manufacturer. This crawler was broken. So in the autumn of 1989, he worked and he corrected it. And there's a cute picture of uh, a baby asleep. So and what he did was he fixed the broken blade for these people. Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. John Thompson. This is my favorite picture of the pictures of the week. This is a relatively recent picture of the 1980s from S. Davenport of kids playing in the leaves. That is just adorable. All the times you'd play in the leaves and you'd get spiders on you. And sometimes there would be other things in the leaves that you just don't want to mention. <clears throat> uh, if anybody had that um, happen, then yeah. <laughs> There's uh, picking uh, mushrooms. Lots of people are out picking mushrooms this time of year. So that's a big haul. Check out that huge mushroom there. That is uh, Jillian Loke. Uh, chose this photo of my mother and I showing off our haul of field mushrooms taken in Gloucestershire in 1976. That is a great photograph. Let's see. A photo taken in the autumn of 1966 shows my mother. Honor Lawrence, named Balmer, and her four children, Dieter, Axel, U, and Juta. Somewhere in the Baltic Sea. That's a nice picture. Thank you very much, Dieter. Let's see. Beautiful tree. View from my, my sun deck. Grape vines climbing up the red maple tree. So, and that's from Kathleen Thompson. That's a pretty tree. It really is. <clears throat> and a black cat. And Harvest Moon, another cat. And here I'm going to say what, what Chris says to do. Animals! <laughs> That's a cool picture. That's a good uh, Halloween picture, too. That's from Gary Nevis. Nevis. Another fall picture of uh, mom on the left, little older brother standing up on the right, and perhaps me or one of my four younger sisters. This is from M. Ross. That's a great picture. Really a good picture. Another uh, bird's feather flock together. So there's some Canadian geese or turkeys 
up in the field here from Deborah Campbell. That's a nice picture for fall. This is a little trouble with the autumn theme. So this photo is my grandfather, Harold Hal, not Rammel. He's grouped with his scout troop, and I assume it was taken in autumn. There you go. I love how the names are written on the back. Pretty cool. They almost look like a baseball team. I uh, don't know for sure if this photo was taken in autumn, but the sweaters, caps, and the state of the foliage and the rake leaning against the tree in the background suggests autumn to me. And I'm looking for people in the windows. I don't see any. Uh, with their dog. That's cool. It's uh, my mother's first cousins, Roy and Ray Warren. And look at the matching. Everything is matching. The sweater should be on the dog, too. That was from Lloyd Wright. Uh, 1906 photograph of my great-grandparents, my grandmother and her much younger brother was taken outside the schoolhouse in Bottom Norfolk, where my great-grandfather was a headmaster. So that's a nice picture as well. Love the dress. Oh, frilly. Uh, this is an opportunity for me to use one of my Montreal postcards from 1910. It's not part of the challenge, just an add-on for fun. I was so inspired by all the great photos from fall. However, um, those doing the accuracy challenges may spot St. James Methodist Church in the back right side, which I featured under the theme preservation. And you can tell it was actually mailed because it has the little marks on it. That's a beautiful uh, postcard, Pat. And Marion Cerruti has a picture of June Smith Hillier and Doris Smith's sisters taken in 1948, wrapped up in their furs. And okay, in October we look to uh, we like to cook pumpkins. Last year there wasn't a lot of family around me, but I cooked the same dish, and I would have done it for them. So that looks good. Whatever that is, that looks good. He doesn't he doesn't ever say what the dish was, but it looks really good. So that is the the photo of the week, the question of the week, the connection of the week, and. Let me see if I can figure out how to quickly get up to, um, here, let's just do this. We'll go right here and let's see if there is a thing about the feature Friday coming up. I don't see it on the front page. No, but there is a feature Friday coming up. I believe there is a G to G post about it. Let's check it. Here we go. Thank you, Greg. Let's see, and it's, uh, we'll go ahead and like this. If you're ever on G2G, you should always like the answers and the questions. Friday, November 5th at 4 p.m. Eastern. It's every other week. So one week is uh, Friday date night, and the other week is going to be feature Friday. Friday, November the 5th at 4 p.m. Eastern. We're excited to host our very first Friday feature. Uh, as Dennis Barton suggested in another thread, we are going to do an overview of the available apps, that's applications, so you can get a general idea of what is there and how it can be used. We'll go into them in more depth and feature Friday episodes, uh, such as Rob Pavey on November 19th. He'll talk about the, his AGC and Sorcerer apps. I really like that Sorcerer app. I've been using it because it's so hard to find a Sorcerer app for a, a, a source for uh, Ancestry, you can't pull that source out easily. You have to kind of finagle it. And this app is really cool. You just click a button. If you're on a page with a source on it, it'll create a source in inline or not inline. It's really good. So if you have any questions about apps, post them below and we'll try and cover them during the live cast on Friday. Uh, you'll be able to view the live cast on YouTube and Twitter. The live casts are also recorded so you can watch them later. If you want to know more about it, you can go to the Feature Friday space page and uh, check it out. Pretty cool. What is Feature Friday? Feature Friday is a bi-monthly webcast, live cast. Each live cast focuses on the feature of Wikitree and demonstrates how it can be used and its benefits. How about that? Pretty cool. Oh, and uh, people are talking about some of the apps. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you, Alexis. That's very nice of you. I'm going to put that up just because, you know, it makes my head bigger. Thank you, Alexis. 
I like doing the live cast. I like, I love WikiTree. I believe in Chris Witten's vision for WikiTree. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. Have a safe Halloween. If you are trick or treating and your kids are trick or treating, put something flashy or bright or reflective on their outfit while they're out doing their candy grabbing. Uh, make your dentist appointments for next week. Have a safe and happy Halloween. Bye, everybody.